All right, so we're ready to start applying hatches and I'm just gonna turn off the trees here and then I'm gonna select all of these trunks and just delete them because we don't need them anymore. We already have our trees. So now we have kind of a clean um, palette to work from and I'm gonna add a layer here and just call it hatches. So we're gonna use this layer to, um, to add all the patterns to these different areas. And each of these areas is gonna have a slightly different hatch depending on the material that it is. So if we go over here to our diagram swatches palette, we can go over to the hatches and you can just select some that you think would be appropriate for what you're trying to do. And um, I'm gonna just select three or four and just Control C copy and then Control V paste them into my demo plan file. As soon as I paste them in, I'll just drag them off to the side here. Um, I can look over here into my swatches palette and they automatically show up. So each of these patterns is automatically added as a swatch as soon as I've copied them in. That means I can use those swatches and apply them to different shapes on the plan. So if I just select this area here, and then I click on a swatch in this swatch palette, it will fill it with a swatch. So I'm gonna zoom in and you can see um, it fills it all the way to the edges. It's oriented in uh, the same direction as what I copied it in as. So if I wanted to, I could grab all of these inner layers, which all have kind of a understory planting. And what I would do is, duplicate them. So I would control C to duplicate them and then shift control V to paste them in place. You can also access this from the menu going edit copy and edit paste in place. We do that so that we, um, we don't edit the line work layer. We want to make a copy of that and uh, be able to manipulate the hatches independently. So once we have that, we will just drag that selected layer up to hatches. And then I can um, select the swatch that I would like to fill them with. So I've selected the hatches layer and I'm gonna select a swatch. And so all of the shapes are filled with the same swatch. And I can just like click on all of these swatches to, to see how they look. But I'm gonna choose this like planting mulch layer, um, this planting mulch swatch and now all of those areas are filled. Now I would go over to the stroke and just remove the stroke. I can double click here and select this red line and that's going to remove the stroke. So now I'm left with just the hatches, not the strokes. That way these are independent from the line work layer. So I can select this shape over here and make a copy, control C and paste it in place, shift control V and move it into the hatches layer and then fill it with a hatch. And that works fine for any of these uh, objects that are um, totally independent. But what about these ones with the benches? Um, those aren't selectable by their interior area. If I select it, it just selects the outside profile and um, I can't just select the inside profile. So if I fill this with a hatch, it's going to go all the way to the edges, which overlaps with the wood uh, decking or the wood bench around it. So um, if you're familiar with Illustrator, you might think, oh, we'll just use a layer mask or a clipping mask, but you can't do that. It doesn't really work. So I'm going to show you how we fill in these other areas that aren't closed polylines. So the first thing we're going to do is select the inner bench line and the outer profile line. And then we're going to go to object, live paint, make. And this makes it what's called a live paint object. And now I'm gonna show you where there's a bit of a secret menu on the Illustrator bar. So if we go over here to these three dots, you see there's a whole bunch of commands that are not on the toolbar. And if we scroll all the way down to this paint section, we see a live paint bucket. And just remember here, the shortcut is K. That is going to save you a lot of time. So just press K. And suddenly when we move over, we have this highlighted red outlined area that shows us what our live paint area is. Um, so now we can select a swatch and use the live paint bucket to fill it up. I'm just gonna go up here to these objects and I'm going to go object, live paint, make, 
and then press K to access my paint bucket. And now if I choose a swatch, I can fill those areas no problem. And now those are um, able to be filled without going overlapping onto the wood areas. Now I can keep doing this. Um, I can look at this object and I can say, okay, well, I'm going to um, need to close this off before I make it into a live paint object. So I could grab the pen tool, P for pen, and just highlight this, uh, this upper corner. It turns into a line and click on it and then go down here. You'll see there's like a little circle at the end, which means this line can be joined and connected. So I'll just create um, a line here, click with the pen tool, and now I have a closed object. I could do this individually for every object as I go through, but instead I'm going to just control Z so that I return to my original palette. And I'm gonna show you an easier way to do this from the beginning. So if I just control Z and go back to my plan before anything was made into a live paint object, I'm even gonna delete all of the hatches that were in these planters so that I have a nice clean palette. I'm just gonna select my entire hatch layer and just delete it. Now I'm going to turn off my annotation and make sure I just have the line work. So I'll turn off the wood benches as well. I just want outlines and I'm gonna select everything and then I'm going to copy it, control C or edit, copy, and then paste it in place. Shift control V or paste in place. I'm going to drag this selection into the hatches layer up here and uh, then I'm going to turn off my line work and you see we're left with line work hatches. So now I'm going to select everything again and I'm going to go to object, live paint, make. And it's going to give me a little warning message. I'll say OK. And now if I press K and I highlight this area, I can see that all of these objects have been made into a live paint object. So that means that every single one of these closed polylines can be filled with a different um, swatch color or value. And I would recommend that this is how you do your hatches. So now we go to our swatch palette. I can select the hatches that I wanna use, press K for my live paint. And look, I can fill this entire paving area with a paving hatch just by clicking on it. So I'll grab my planting hatch and fill those ones. I'll grab my mulch and fill these ones. And then I'll grab my sand and fill in my sand pit area. So this is the easiest way to apply hatches is by using the live paint tool. So I'm gonna select all of the hatches and just remove the stroke. You can do that by setting them to zero or you can grab the stroke here and just click this little red line, which will remove all of the stroke. It'll just make it so that there's no stroke. And now you can see if we click away, all we have are hatches, no lines, and we can drag our line work layer on top so that it's over top of the hatches. And now everything is able to be um, manipulated independently. When I uh, duplicated my line work somewhere along the way, I must have lost my line weights. Um, I think when I was making them the live paint object, maybe I put them all on the same layer. So I'm just going to go through and reassign and make sure that my lines are on their right layer. So I'll select these um, control joints and put them on the proper layer and then select all the profiles and give them the right um, profile edge. I think everything else is all right. So turn back on my wood benches and my annotations and my tree. And now that the annotations are over top of the hatches, I would like to give those a white background. So I'm just gonna go on to the annotation layer and then go to this rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around that text. And then I'm going to select the fill color here and give it a white background fill. And I'm gonna select this stroke and give it this red line, which means there's no stroke. So it's just gonna be a white box with no outline. And now if I go back to my selection tool and select that box, I can go to arrange, send to back. That's just gonna send it to the back of that layer. So it's behind the rest of the text. And I can select it again and just uh, drag this handle up to give it a little bit more space at the top here. And now I have a white background for my text over top of the hatch layer. So we can also use live paint just with regular colors. If we go back to our swatches palette and hit color, then we have a whole bunch of options and color sliders here. We can change that by going to the menu and changing these options here just to see what else there is. Um, for example, if I just go over 
to um, grayscale, then I can select a bunch of gray colors uh, where I might want to add in maybe some shading to the edge where I know this angles down a little bit. So I can use my color picker, press K, and then fill in an edge. What I'm gonna do is actually just take away the hatching on the paving layer and uh, because I think it's gonna be a little bit intense. And so I think I'm just gonna remove the hatching from the layer and just change that to white. After I have uh, decided I'm done with my drawing, I will save the Illustrator file, of course, and um, I will also save it as a PDF. And I'm going to save it with the same name as the PDF here, but just a note that it's going to export just the artwork bounds. You're not going to see these trees um, where they get over top of this edge. So if we just take a look at our PDF, it's going to show us that we are um, cutting off the trees at the edge. So if you don't want that to happen, you're going to have to increase the size of your artboard. So we'll just go back to Illustrator and hit Artboard. And then I'm just using Alt and then dragging on this handle to increase the size of the artboard. It kind of increases it from the center. And I'm just gonna drag it till it covers the edge of the trees. Now I still see a line here that was my um, site boundary. I just turned the site bounds off now. And now we can see the whole drawing is encompassed in the artboard. So I can go ahead and save it as an AI file and then save it as a PDF file. And uh, now I should be good to go.